Elijah's experience is a reminder again to us that the undulating pathway of life can quick, quickly take a downward trajectory. And, a, and it is in such times that we need to keep the Lord before us and not to do anything rashly. Elijah, on hearing uh, the threats of Jezebel, would have been better to seek counsel at the mouth of the Lord and to wait patiently on him. But instead, God's servant lent on his own understanding. He acted on a rash and hasty impulse that led him to desert his post of duty and flee from the one who sought his destruction. Dr. Gill was right when he said Elijah's conduct on this occasion shows that the spirit and courage he had previously manifested were of the Lord. And not of himself. And that those who have the greatest zeal and courage for God and his truth, if left to themselves, become weak and timorous. Such weakness and vulnerability we need to come to recognize in ourselves, especially after our successes. There are many other examples. I think of John the Baptist and how after having such a blessed preaching ministry, and many coming out of Jerusalem to come and hear John the Baptist. What do we find him doing in the prison house? He's asking the question, is Jesus Christ the Messiah or not? From victory to abject despair. When we think of Peter's denial, here he is. He saw the Lord in the Mount of Transfiguration. He's been brought into that garden. And not long after that, he's now publicly affirming not only that he would deny the Lord, but that he would die with him. That's what Peter said. He said, I'll not, only, I'll not deny you, but I'll die with you. But what do we find him doing? We find him denying the Lord. All we've considered today, let me very quickly, and very quickly bring a few points of application. Number one, point one of application, the best of men are only men of best. <laughs> 